Hey everyone, my name's Andrew J. Clark, a landscape photographer from Western Australia, and it's been a little while since my last video. But I've got something pretty exciting for you today, the brand new and long anticipated A7 Mark IV. If you're a hybrid shooter who loves a bit of landscape on the side, or a full-on landscape enthusiast who can't quite justify the jump to the A7R Mark IV or the A1, this is definitely the video for you. I've got hands-on footage, some sample shots, and even that eight and a half minute long, long exposure from the thumbnail, which I think you're gonna wanna see close up. But before I go any further, I do have to say that I am a Sony-sponsored photographer here in Australia which means I do have a relationship with Sony Australia and they lent me this camera to test out before some upcoming events that we're running together. However, I don't get to keep the camera. Sony has not and will not have any input into the content of this video whatsoever. And I'm certainly not getting paid to do it. I've had the A7 Mark IV for a few days now and I can already say right off the bat that I absolutely love this camera and I think that the handful of big improvements plus the plethora of small little quality of life improvements are gonna make sure it lives up to the hype long term. But we don't currently have the ability to properly process the raw files and as a landscape photographer, that's such an integral part of my workflow that this is still necessarily a first impressions video. Although if I can pull this shot from just a JPEG, you can trust me when I say this is a very promising camera for a landscape photographer. So I took it out to shoot hands-on immediately after picking it up from Sony and recorded some of my initial impressions out in the field. So let's throw it to Andrew from a couple of days ago. So I've come down to Maylands Jetty, which is the local jetty near my place, to test out the A7 IV versus the A7R IV, specifically for landscape photography. Now, I don't have the best conditions today with empty blue skies for landscape photography, but this location has this very detailed jetty in the foreground, so it'll be a great opportunity to test out the resolution differences between these two cameras and see if the A7R IV really holds up. So the setup that I'm working with today is I've got both cameras, same composition, same lens. We've got the 20 millimeter F1.8 G lens from Sony and the same filters on the front. I'm using the Hyder M10 system with a CPL and a six stop ND to give us a little bit of the long exposure with the smooth water effect. I can tell you there's a few standout things which really make the shooting experience a bit more seamless. We'll talk about image quality a little bit later when I get back to the studio, but let me show you in a bit more detail what I'm talking about. So what I really love about the A7 IV over the A7R IV is this fully articulating screen is actually such a useful feature for a landscape photographer. Maybe not so much for this composition, but I often find myself shooting in portrait orientation close to the ground and the ability to twist this up or to angle it in a really cramped space is practically a huge deal. Another little thing which I've noticed between these cameras is that the display area of this screen is actually slightly larger than the A7R IV as well. I think one of the reasons why they've been able to squeeze out a few extra millimeters is because you can now see that the UI showing you all your exposure information is actually overlaid slightly over the picture, um, which is something which I really like. And I've also noticed that the UI disappears from view when you're using certain display modes. So let me cycle through to the uh, most minimalist display mode. And after a few seconds, we should see the, the UI disappears. And all I need to do is just slightly tap the shutter button to bring it back. This is just a handy quality of life improvement that I think I'm really gonna like out in the field. So one thing I've just noticed now while trying to reprogram this extra control dial on the top, which in this camera is fully customizable, there's now an option in the menu to have a different setting apply when you're in manual exposure to when you're in the other exposure modes like aperture priority or shutter priority. And that's really interesting for me because as a landscape photographer, when I'm generally shooting in manual exposure, the idea of having this tuned to ISO is quite appealing to have all three of my exposure settings on the control dials. However, when I shoot in aperture priority and shutter priority, I still use exposure compensation. So the ability to have it natively set up with different control dials automatically in those different exposure modes seems really appealing and I'm really interested to see if that sort of workflow works for me in the long term. So another little quality of life improvement in the A7 IV over the A7R IV, when we've shot in portrait orientation and we're reviewing the photograph, you can see on the older generation cameras, if you then try and zoom in 
to check the focus and check the depth of field of your image, it's rotated the photograph back into landscape orientation, but that doesn't help us very much because we're in portrait. So you can see top is now to the left. On the newer camera, rather intuitively, when we do the same thing and try and zoom into this photo to review our, our depth of field and review our focus, well, it's stayed in portrait mode, so I can scroll up and it all makes sense in terms of orientation. Now let's take a look at a couple of quick shots from this first shoot. While I wasn't overly impressed with the scene itself, what did impress me was just how well the A7 Mark IV kept up with the A7R Mark IV in terms of dynamic range and in terms of detail. These images are edited JPEGs and you can see you can achieve a remarkably similar result from both these cameras despite the image quality advantage you would expect the A7R Mark IV to have. As we punch into the JPEGs, now without any adjustments or camera corrections applied at all, you can see that the resolution difference is negligible at 100% crop. You have to go in quite a bit further to see where the A7R Mark IV really stands out. But the story doesn't end here. I know that some people like seeing those baseline, boring, straight out of camera JPEGs for a new camera model to give you a baseline to compare against other camera models. But on this channel, we set the bar a little bit higher than that. So rather than settling for just those average shots I got on that first shoot and posting the video on launch day to take advantage of the YouTube algorithm, I waited for some good conditions to materialize and drove an hour south to try and chase down some better landscape shots to show you guys. I recorded a bit of a vlog while I was out there, but the audio ended up being garbage because of the wind. And I know this video is gonna be way too long for a first impressions video anyway, so I'm just gonna to cut to the chase. I took this first shot facing north just before sunset to take advantage of the color in the north sky. And then as the sun set below the horizon, I set up for an eight minute long exposure facing west. Check this out. As I zoom in, virtually no hot pixels. I haven't seen anyone comment on this upgrade just yet, but the A7 III had huge issues with hot pixels. Check out the confetti looking hot pixels on this shot from the A7 Mark III from a few years back. And this exposure was 30 seconds shorter than the example from the A7 IV, which I took recently. My guess would be that the new heat dissipation system, which was first introduced in the A7S III and has now been carried across to the A7 Mark IV, has virtually solved the hot pixel issue. So if you're a long exposure fiend, like me, the hot pixel fix may be enough on its own to justify the upgrade from an A7 III to the A7 IV. But when you pair it with the increased resolution of this brand new 33 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor, Sony's new menus and touchscreen implementation, the larger physical monitor, flip out screen and smarter UI, better focus in low light, better ergonomics with smarter button placement and fully customizable control dials, and the anti-dust mechanism, it's starting to look like a very, very compelling landscape camera. In fact, if I'm being truly honest with myself, it beats my beloved A7R Mark IV in basically every category except for maximum resolution. And even then, my first tests are showing that maybe that isn't a huge difference after all. So it's certainly an upgrade to the A7 III, and I haven't even scratched the surface of all the other little improvements which have happened since that camera came out. But it's also looking like it might be an upgrade to the A7R Mark IV for landscape photography, and that's a much more expensive camera. But again, these are just my first impressions of the camera. I haven't had it very long and I haven't had the chance to fully unlock those raw files yet. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this camera, particularly as it pertains to landscape photography in the comments below. And if you've got any questions about this camera, also feel free to chuck them down there. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, I'm kind of super late to the A7 IV party with this upload. So now more than ever, I'd appreciate a like and a comment if you've got the time. And if you're keen to see my deep dive video into this camera for landscape photography, consider subscribing. I'm back doing regular content on YouTube, so there's gonna be more from me very soon. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.